Hi everyone, Kieran Stone here. If you've been following me on Instagram at KieranStoneAU, you'll see that I recently posted this photo and got quite a good response to it. A lot of people seem to enjoy it. Um, I originally created it as just a sort of over the top edit for my previous YouTube video, um, just sort of demonstrating why you should start learning Photoshop. And some people saw it from that video and really wanted to know more about the image and how I actually created this effect. So if you watch the previous video, you'll see that the original image is actually this one. And then with some edits and some creativity, it's taken it to this. So it has a, a long exposure look to it. It's not a true long exposure. It just has that kind of feel to it. Um, a true long exposure looks something more like this. Um, where you've got nice streaky clouds, a bit of, still a bit of detail to the clouds and the light as well. And if you've got nice still water, you can have really clear reflections of the sky and also, in this case, the buildings and boats. If the water's a bit more rough, you'll have more of a flat detail, less look to the water. So the here the waves are quite high and crashing all over the place, so all that motion just sort of blurs into this flat look. And the clouds here, you have clouds going in all different directions just because it was quite windy and off in the distance. Because they move a lot slower, you don't send, tend to see as much movement. Whereas this one, once you sort of see the previous ones, you can kind of see that it's not quite a real long exposure. All the details gone from the streakiness in the clouds. It's a bit too even and the water has a lot of detail and isn't really just sort of flat. So in Sydney Harbour, Sydney Harbour here, you're not really going to get calm conditions in this area and you should sort of have just that flat looking water after a long exposure. But I'll show you how I got to this point anyway from here and show you that it's not too difficult. So the first thing I have done is just done some uh, simple edits just to bring it to something like this. So just made it a bit warmer, changed the colors a little bit, just the blues and the, the yellows and reds, and just made it a nice bright image there. Uh, I won't go through these edits to get to this point because uh, it can be a bit a bit lengthy, but if you're interested in seeing how I edit my photos, feel free to go to kieranstone.com. You can download some full edits from the raw file to finished product. But in this video, I'll just show you how I got to this stage here from here. So after I've done all my edits, the first thing I'm going to do is create a stamp visible layer by holding Control Alt Shift and E or Command Option Shift and E if you're using a Mac. And that way I've got just a, a stamped layer of all of my edits just as a new layer. Now the first effect I'm going to do is to the sky. So I want to create a selection of the sky. So I'm going to use my wand tool or press W or my quick selection tool, sorry, and just draw over the sky until it gets an idea of what I actually want. So it's done a pretty good job of making a selection along the sky here. Just going to improve it a bit by pressing select and mask and just drawing roughly along the edge here. For this particular effect, it doesn't need to be too accurate. Uh, we'll just trace along here anyway. And then press OK. So now we've got a selection of the sky. So I'm going to make this whole area a new layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And so that's just made a layer of just the sky. Now I want to make a layer mask of this whole layer and this selection. So if I hold down Ctrl or Command and click on that layer, it will bring that selection back and I'll add a layer mask to that. So that means anything white is showing through, anything black won't show through. Now because I don't want to affect this layer mask, I'm going to detach it from my layer. Select my layer again, and I recommend you turn it to a smart object. 
and this will allow you to sort of more easily change the effects and I've lost my layer mask there so I'll just hold control again make that selection and turn add a layer mask and detach it so now with this layer selected I can go to filter blur radial blur and normally you'll start with a radial blur somewhere in the middle but I want to move it to around about where the Sun's gonna be so probably just as a guess probably about there and maybe around 50 for the first part of this step and just press OK and we just wait for the radial blur to take place maybe I should get some elevator music while it goes through this progress Okay, it's done. Now, you can still see that it's got quite a bit of detail, but it looks just a bit a bit sloppy. I'd, I'd prefer it to be a bit more streakier than this. So after I've done that one effect, I'm just going to go to filter, blur, radial blur, and just apply that same effect in the same spot again. And I won't subject you to that terrible elevator music. I'll just wait it out. This will take however long or however fast your computer is. Radial blur can take a little while. Almost there. And done. So that's looking pretty good there. Now the reason I have detached it from the layer mask is because if I had that layer mask active as well, it would add that effect to all this area here and blur it out and I'd end up with these streaky clouds going over the top of the Opera House. So that's done a pretty good job. I'm happy with that. But it looks a bit flat up the top and I wouldn't mind sort of darkening and adding a bit more contrast to this area here. So I'm gonna create a curves adjustment layer. And because if I start making adjustments here, it's only, it's affecting the whole image. If I hold down Alt and click in between these layers, it'll mean that it's just gonna affect the layer below. So now, I can make adjustments and it's just going to affect that sky area there. So I'm just going to darken it a bit, add a bit more contrast. Just about there. But I don't want it to affect here, so I'm going to grab my gradient tool, select a circular gradient, and with black to white, just going to draw a gradient through there. So now it's not affecting that central area and it's just affecting the outside of the sky adding a bit more contrast and darkness to it so that's pretty much the sky done the next step is for the water and for the first thing I need to do for the water is get rid of this little structure here so I'm just gonna zoom in here so yeah, that's too much maybe about there just gonna create a new layer just in case I mess things up I'll do this pretty quickly, you can make it a bit more accurate if you have something to get rid of, but the stamp tool does a pretty good job, or the clone stamp tool does a pretty good job of just getting rid of things. It's going to look pretty rough, just because I don't want to spend too much time just getting rid of this thing. some of the muddiness and some of the stuff down here just add a bit more effects from different areas okay this is pretty terrible job at cloning out something but you get the idea At least from this distance, it doesn't look too bad. 
Now, I'm just going to merge that down to my previous layer. So just merge that one down. And I'm gonna grab my quick selection tool again and just make a selection of the water. Yeah, that's done a pretty good job. It's just this little part over here that I wanna fix up. So I'm just gonna grab my lasso tool, hold down shift, so I'm adding this selection to it. Just I'm gonna draw along there. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Again, you can be as accurate as you want with these selections. I'm just gonna do it a bit quicker. Just gonna press Control or Command J to make that a new layer. And I won't worry about making it a smart object for the moment, but I will press Control to make a selection of it, add a layer mask and detach that layer mask. Select the layer again, go to Filter, and this time go into Motion Blur. So here, at an angle of zero, just to make it going left to right. If I have it going up and down, it's gonna look kind of weird. So just at zero, maybe about, and just until, I reckon around 300. Yeah, about there looks pretty good. And just press okay. And once again, I want to add a bit of more contrast and darkness to this bottom area. So I'm gonna select a curves layer, press Alt or Option to attach it to the bottom layer, darken it a bit, add a bit of contrast. And this time, instead of a radial or a circular gradient, I'm gonna add just a straight one and just take it out of that middle region there. So that's looking pretty good already. But one more thing we have to do, and that is, from my previous edit, is make the Opera House just a little bigger. So to do that, I'm going to grab this selection here, hold down control to grab that as a selection, and my sky one, if I hold down control and shift, or command and shift, it will add that selection to the previous one. Now if I hold down control shift and I, or command shift I, it's going to invert that selection to just have this middle area here. And from my um, stamp visible layer, command J or control J, let's turn that into a new layer. Just move that up to the top. And then control or command T will then give me the transform tool and holding down shift just to keep it all in the same ratio. I'm just going to enlarge it a little bit Hold enter and move it until it kind of sits over the top of the previous one there. Add a layer mask just so I can fix up some of this area and take that out. And zoom in a little bit. Just blend it in. That doesn't look too bad. Well, that was a very quick job, but it seems to have worked. So that was what I did previously. So that's the previous photo, my original one, and that's what we've done just now. So there's a few slight differences, but the, the main effect is done there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video of showing you how to create a kind of faked long exposure look, but something that still looks pretty good and quite eye-catching. Um, if you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, for more videos and tutorials on Photoshop. Uh, follow me on at KieranStoneAU on Instagram, and I'll see you next time.